say we want to have a blessed life, but what does that really mean? 
Is it simply having a nice car, a big house, new clothes? What if a blessed life isn't what you think? What if it's more about what you give away than what you hold on to? What if it's more about the contents of your heart than the contents of your bank account? How do we really live the blessed life?
today's story point is God's growing kingdom is more valuable than anything. And the Bible verse is He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. In Him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1 13 14. Bye! Hey, BT Kids, my name is Dylan Saudania. Can you believe it's September already? Jeez, we will see you're gone. Today's story talks about parables. Do you know what a parable is? It's a story that teaches a lesson. Jesus told many during the time he ministered. So find a comfy chair or your favorite place to sit and let's get started with today's lesson, Kingdom Parables. Hey everyone, I'm Megan and I'm Jesse. What's our Bible story about today, Megan? Today is about parables about God's kingdom. Pair of bulls? Like the cows with horns? <laughs> no, not a pair of bulls. Parables. Parables are stories that Jesus told to teach people something about God's kingdom. Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> yes, Jesus told stories about things people knew and understood to help them understand something about God's kingdom. That's a good idea! <laughs> yep, listen to the story. One day, Jesus went out and sat by the sea. Many people came to hear him teach, so Jesus got into a boat and sat down. The people stood on the shore and Jesus told them parables, or stories, to teach them about God's kingdom. Jesus' disciples asked him, Why do you tell stories to teach? Jesus said, Not everyone will understand what is true about God's kingdom. In the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah said, Some people look, but they do not see. Hmm. They hear, but they do not listen or understand. Oh. Through Jesus, Isaiah's words came true. Jesus told the disciples, You are blessed because you understand. Then Jesus told a parable. God's kingdom is like a mustard seed that a man planted in his field. It is the smallest seed, but it grows taller than the garden plants. The seed becomes a tree, and the birds build nests in its branches. Then Jesus said, God's kingdom is like leaven, or yeast, that a woman mixed into flour. The leaven makes the dough rise. Jesus told another parable. God's kingdom is like a treasure buried in a field. A man found the treasure and buried it again. Then he joyfully sold everything he had and bought that field. Then Jesus said, God's kingdom is like a man looking for beautiful pearls. When he found one very valuable pearl, he sold wow. everything he had and bought it. When Jesus finished teaching the crowds, he left that place wow. and went to his hometown. God's kingdom is growing in the world. His kingdom is valuable and worth giving everything for. While we wait for Jesus to come back and set up his kingdom, we obey him and tell others about King Jesus, who rescues sinners. Hi everyone, welcome back. It's time for more Pre-K with Miss Luann. But before we start our story today, someone is here that has missed you so much. Some of you know who this is. Some of you have missed him a lot too. So let's see who has come to visit today. Look, who is that? Do you recognize who that is? It's Cubby. Cubby has missed all of you. He loves you. He just wanted to come by and say hi. Can you say hi to Cubby? Hi. Thanks, Cubby. Maybe you can rest over here for a while. He just had to come. 
so I let him. Our story today is when Jesus was teaching by the sea. Well, the people came, they were getting so crowded, he got into a boat and pushed off and he taught them from the boat. He was telling them parables. Now, if you know what a parable is and you watch the video, parable is a story that teaches us what God wants to know about him and about heaven. So our first parable is telling us what heaven is like. He uh, kingdom of God is like um, a mustard seed. Okay, so I found some seeds at home. These are not mustard seeds because mustard seeds are very small. These are actually pumpkin seeds. Okay, so we're gonna grow, we're gonna just plant a seed and see what happens. We get our, our dirt here. So if you wanna plant something, this is what you have to do. You need a planter, some dirt, pour some in, put in your seed, cover it over, and pour in water. And before you know it, the seed is gonna grow. We add water and sunshine, and if you keep doing it, the plant gets a little bit bigger. Okay, we have to keep taking care of it and taking care of it. And before we know it, the plant has gotten so big, like the mustard seed, the tiniest little seed that's gonna grow to a huge tree, like this tree back here, which will be so big that there will be, the birds can have their nests and they can be inside of it. So the kingdom of heaven is like the mustard seed. It keeps growing. I'm gonna put these down here out of our way. The kingdom of heaven is also like leaven and dough. Okay, so when someone's baking, they take some leaven and sprinkle it on the dough, cover it over, and the dough gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Just like the kingdom of heaven keeps growing also. That was the second parable. Now in the next parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who went out and he was digging in, at, in some dirt. And when he was digging, what did he find but a treasure? And But this land wasn't his. Quickly, what did he do? He plant, put that treasure back in, hit it all up. Then as quickly as he can, he went and bought that property and now that treasure belongs to him. So the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. It's something very valuable. Also, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who was looking for the perfect pearl. These are what pearls are. And when he found the perfect pearl, he sold everything he had to buy that pearl because it was so valuable to him. So that's how we can remember God's kingdom is growing and God's kingdom is so valuable. We can do something, a little activity today. It's called coin rubbing. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? You're gonna need a piece of paper. We're gonna to have to borrow some coins from our, from our chest. Okay, so you can get some quarters or dimes. Put them on the table underneath the paper. Put the paper on top and then you're gonna need, oh, good thing we have lots of crayons. You're gonna need a crayon because that's what's gonna work best. A marker is not gonna work. It's gotta be a crayon. So let's do our very best with this. Haven't tried it yet. Don't know if it's gonna work. So we're gonna hold it very carefully and then we're gonna rub back and forth with our crayon. And would you believe what's happening? You might even wanna tape your coins down. So after I rub down, I'm look, you can see the coins right through. They came right through the paper. Try that yourself at home. It'll just take some paper, some coins, and a crayon. Well, that's the end of our story today and the parables, which are stories from God. So remember, God's kingdom is growing and it's very valuable. Have a great week. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do I. Hey BT Kids, welcome back to another Sunday. As you can see, I'm not by myself this month. This month, we're gonna be bringing in our staff to help me out in 
our Bible uh, story time, and I want you to meet everyone. So this right here is Angelina Rodriguez. Angelina is now our new children's ministry coordinator at our Sherryland campus. Uh, we know we love Miss Abby, and she became a nurse, and she's uh, no longer with us. She's looking for a job, so pray that she finds a great job if she hasn't found one yet as a nurse wherever God takes her. So Angelina, tell us about yourself. Well, you introduced me, but my name is Angelina Rodriguez. Um, I am married to Javier Rodriguez for two years already, and we have a little one-year-old girl named Mackenzie Rose Rodriguez. Very so excited, sad that she's getting big, but that's what you do, you grow up. And I'm so excited to be seeing you when we get back together for church, and I can't wait, guys, I'm so excited. Now one thing you don't know about Angelina is that we look alike, right? Either, either, either I'm very pretty or she's very ugly, one of the two. But she is my niece. She is my sister's daughter and is working with us, like I said, at our Sherryland campus and we are excited. So let's get into our story today. It is called Kingdom Parables and today we have four stories. I already gave the answer to this, Angelina, but mm -hmm. what do we call small stories in the Bible? Parables. Parables. Jesus would talk to people and he would tell them stories because they would seem to understand better. And today he's talking about the kingdom of God and he used four different parables to teach people what it meant to be the kingdom of God. So let's begin with the first one. He says here, we are in the book of Matthew. If you have your Bible with you, we're in Matthew chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 31 and we're going to go through uh, probably verse... 45 around there and we'll skip around a little bit but we're going to look at four different parables so we start off here it says he presented another parable to them the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field it's the smallest of all seeds but when grown it's taller than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that birds of the sky come and nest in its branches now Everybody at that time, almost everybody, you had like two different jobs. You were probably a shepherd or you were a farmer. 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 They were an agricultural community and they really understood planting. Now when he says here, he sowed, that means he planted, all right? And the reason Jesus used the mustard seed because at this time, of all the plants they knew that they used there, that they, that they, they planted and grew, the mustard seed was the smallest of mm -hmm. all the seeds. But yet, like you said, when all, the, all of the, everything grew up, the corn would grow to a certain, a certain size, the cabbage, the carrots, the onions, but the mustard seed became a tree. And it was bigger than all the other plants in the garden. So he's saying a small seed can grow really, really big. Now, right now, we don't understand what that means, but he has more parables to help us, okay? Then he gave him another parable. The kingdom of God is like leaven that a woman took and mixed into a 50 pounds of flour until all of it was leavened. Now, Janina, do you bake? No. No, your mom bakes. Yes, my mom, your mom does. bakes. And, and, and her grandma, my mom, uh, makes tortillas. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one time when I was little, I don't know your mom told you this, but I tried to make tortillas. And uh, I saw my mom, you know, she would get flour, she'd get lard, or in Spanish, manteca, mm -hmm. and put it in there, and then she would add water to it. But what I didn't know is that there's another little can uh, of powder that, that's like leaven. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, what's it called? Uh, yeast. Yeast, yeah. And, and I didn't pay attention that mom put that in there. And so, if you eat real tortillas, not the kind you buy at HEB at Walmart, the kind of a melpato, those are real tortillas. When you put them on the, on the, the grill or, or the comal in Spanish, mm -hmm. they, 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 get, they get bubbles in them. They, 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 get, they, they, they rise. That's because of the leaven. Well, mine didn't. Mine stayed flat and they got real gooey and, and they were like, they were not good. Mm -hmm. We, we, we found a place for them, and that was the garbage. Uh, but here, Jesus is telling them that faith starts off small. Mm -hmm. when, when we all became Christians, when you became a Christian, you didn't know everything. 
you, you weren't you you didn't know what God asked for you or what Jesus wanted you to do but as you grew as you read your Bible you learned oh I need to do that well that's growth that's like that little mustard seed or that little bit of leaven that grows and as we grow we learn that Jesus has called us to do several things well what has he called us to do well that's our next two parables all right so we skip down and we go into into verse 44 he says the kingdom the kingdom of God is like treasure buried in a field that a man found and reburied it then in his joy he goes and sells everything he has to buy that field now I think about this I, we, we watch TV mm -hmm. and, and I kind of want to I try to put everything into a movie yeah. and I can see this guy for example he's driving his car and then he sees something really shiny uh, on the side of the road yeah. and it says a fence that says do not do not pass or private property mm -hmm. and he jumps the fence and he goes in it and he digs it and it's this big old huge huge stone made of pure gold mm -hmm. and he goes oh man if, if there's one of these I bet there's more. So he makes a big hole, puts it in there, and he covers it up, and he goes and he sells his car, he sells his house, he sells everything he has, and he comes to the guy who owns that land and says, I'll give you all this money for that piece of land. And the guy says, why? Because I like it, you know? I think it's a pretty piece of land. And he buys it, then he goes back in there, and he gets the gold, and guess what? He's richer than he was before, because he knew there was treasure there. And that's what I think about this. But there's another, another part to this story, another parable. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found one, when he finds one, found one priceless, a priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. You see, pearls are hard to find. And, and girls love pearls. Do you have any pearls? No. You don't have pearls. Tia Lydia has pearl earrings and a pearl necklace. Mm. But you know what? There's pearls that are different sizes. Mm. And you, mm -hmm. do you know where pearls grow? When they grow in clams. In clams. Okay. And you know, it's really we need. If you ever see a, a pearl, it didn't start off as a pearl. It started out as like a piece of sand. And what happens is the clam. You know what a clam is? It opens up in the bottom of the, of the ocean. A piece of sand falls in there. And it begins to, like, like when you have a sore in your mouth, it hurts. It begins to hurt the clam. So the clam makes something in their, in their mouth that covers it up. And it keeps covering it up. And it starts growing into a pearl. Well, some pearls are real small. Mm -hmm. But in this story, I think of it as a really big pearl. And maybe the guy who had it didn't know what pearls were worth. Mm -hmm. But this guy, it says he was a merchant. That means he buys and sells stuff. Oh, yeah. And so when he saw it, he goes, <gasps> that's worth a million bucks probably. A lot of money. So he went and he bought it. Now, I bet you he paid less than what he was going to sell it for. Because he knew when he bought it, he knew the real worth of that pearl. Again, that goes back to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is so priceless. You know, we, we may live on earth and we may not understand what we have in Jesus. But when we get to heaven and we see the gates of pearl, mm -hmm. the pearly gates, the streets of gold. gold, the crystal sea, as the Bible says, we're going to see how priceless the kingdom of heaven is. But you know what? The kingdom on heaven is not just heaven. It's the people here on earth. All those that call themselves Christians, we come together. And let's go back to the beginning. The Bible says that our faith begins what? Small, like a mustard seed. And then it grows. But as it grows, we begin to see the value of it. But here's the thing. As Christians, we don't see the value and hide it. We see the value and we share it. And so as a Christian, as you get to know more and more about Jesus, you don't want to keep quiet. There's an old song, remember that? It goes, 
um, this little light of mine, I'm gonna, gonna let it shine. It says, hide it under a bush. Oh no, I'm gonna let it shine. And that's our faith. Our faith, you know, we, we don't wanna hide it. We wanna share it. So if you're a Christian, if you already have this treasure in your heart, share it. Let those around you know who Jesus is, and most of all, what he did for you. What he did for me and for Angelina, we're not gonna keep quiet. Angelina is now working at BT Sheridan because she wants to share the good news with you. I work here at BT because I wanna share the good news with you, but not just with you, with everybody. As a Christian, we have that treasure. We don't wanna keep it to ourselves. We wanna share it. Now, if you don't have that treasure, if you have no idea what that treasure is, that treasure simply said, is Jesus. The Bible tells us, like I said before, we've all done things that are wrong and that's called sin. sin. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It's in a one verse, in case you don't know. But the Bible says, also tells us that Jesus came and he paid the price for that sin so that we don't have to suffer. But he does that for everybody, mm -hmm. but we have to accept it. If you don't accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, it's a treasure that you haven't taken hold of. So boys and girls, if you have questions about how to become a Christian, ask your mom and dad. Parents, if you don't know how to do that, how to talk to your kids about, about Jesus, give us a call here at BT. We'd love to walk you through this. We'd love your child to understand what it is to have that treasure that's mentioned in the Bible. God bless you guys. Hope you see Angelina soon at Sherryland. Hope we see you back here soon in McAllen. Until then, Angelina, you can say goodbye. Bye, everybody.